Hey everybody, something a little bit different today. You may be aware I have a great interest in engineering and history, and I used to do a fair amount of shooting when I was younger, so I'm also interested in firearms, but not in the sense of like a gun nut, something like that, as you may be thinking. I just, I appreciate the mechanical solutions that they came up with. And what's nice about this um, is that you can own pieces of history, tangible pieces of, of you know, artifacts from the past for just a few pounds. And for that reason, I have an inert ordnance collection, which is a vast collection of different rounds. Um, you know, I've got some missile fins, some other bits and pieces. None of it costs more than the most expensive expensive thing I think I own cost about 35, 40 quid as an individual item. So over time, you know. Anyway, well, I think maybe because of COVID, uh, things are getting cheaper. And I was able to pick up this uh, Bren light machine gun. Magazine. I know it's from a brain gun, but I think it's about the 80s. Well, no, not the 80s. That'd be way too. This is the just G3 mag, HK G3 mag. Um, this is from the 80s. That should be older. And the last one, which is particularly cool, um, is this, which is from a Thompson machine gun. Um, you know, it's 45 ACP, 30 rounds. This, from what I can tell, is 1942 because, and I'll show you the markings when I get to cleaning this one, you'll see what I need to clean it, um, because it's got, it's all capitalised, it says the C, uh, C, Seymour uh, Products Company, Seymour Con, um, and it's got no punctuation or anything, and my understanding that makes this 1942. So it's a 1942 original US World War II Thompson mag for 10 quid. That's pretty cool. That's what, that's what I just think. Anyway, the reason why we're here is, as you can see, these are, utterly filthy the people i bought these from i've i've only bought rounds from before i've never bought any uh magazines or anything and it's just pure filth i think it might be wow, it, it smells like axe or grease i don't it's just really nasty so i want to clean these up and that's what i'm going to do in this video i've got to take these apart and clean them and i thought it might be interesting and also for people who might find this interesting, they might also know a little bit about the markings. Um, do keep in mind, this is not how you would do this for real, if these are like functioning magazines. I'm just cleaning them for display. Uh, I've got a ton of 45 ACP um, inert rounds left over from when I was doing resin casts, so I should be able to mostly, well, half fill it. It's nice to have some in there so it just looks authentic. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is take them all apart and clean this grease out of them. Um, these look like they're going to be the easiest ones. Should just be a case of pushing the dimple down and going across. Oh! Why is it you can never find the punch you want? I don't want a pointed punch, I want one of my rounded ones. Look, there's some um, 45 ACP, a couple of 9 mils, and some um, 556 that have been smashed out of failed castings. These are all inert, this is all legal. In the UK, as long as there's no explosives in something like this, uh, you can own pretty much anything. No license, no age requirement, anything like that. Oh, that is gungy. Oh, it's so nasty. The, the way I'm going to be cleaning these, I think, probably is going to be using just rags and WD-40. I know WD-40 is not really the right thing to use, but it will clean it. It will give it some protection, and I'll oil them with some normal oil afterwards um, just to protect them. But they're going to be kept inside. They're not going to be used outside. There's not a rust issue or anything like that. And as you can see, this one looks like it's already starting to rust. So that's the G3 mag taken apart. I wonder if anyone's taken a Bren mag apart with a 556 before. <laughs> oh, you're... You're gonna be a pain, aren't you? Did any of you get the bad batch of uh, trade size WD-40 cans? Uh, well, I, I assume it's a bad batch. Basically, normally you get most of your spray out of this, you know, your, your actual chemical, before the gas runs out. I've had two in a row which ran out about half a can through but you can still use it because you just turn it upside down and let it drip out okay i'll let that soak a minute while i take this one apart um the thompson mag should just need a little lift on the rear i'm 
and it should slide out. <sighs> Just using a little plastic cup on the desk to as I push against. There we go. Oh, that's real nasty. I mean, the follower's like stuck up here. <laughs> so if you're wondering, like, you know, what the hell spicy? How, well, how do you know about this stuff? I have, since I was a child, been interested in firearms. When I was very young, um, before my mum and dad split up, I used to do quite a lot of clay pigeon shooting. Um, and quite a lot of air rifle shooting. And I would have hoped, well, I was always hoping to progress that, join a club, etc, etc, get a rifle. But in this day and age, it's very difficult to... Oh, my God, look at the state of that. I mean, it's kept it in good condition, but... It's real nasty. There isn't a club near here, and just, it's very expensive, from what I can see. You know, it's getting, I mean, once you're into it, you're alright, you're alright. Or if you, I think if there's clubs you can, like, rent rifles from, so you can just go and shoot there, and you're practically paying for membership and ammo. Um, that's better, but there isn't anything like that near here. But yeah, no, I'm just very interested by the history. And it's not like I'm obsessed by war or something, I actually, there's... As I recently mentioned talking about films, I find some war films to be um, distress not distressing, what's the right if they just affect me. Um, because I just I don't like how horrible humans can be. And so often the reason for the conflict is just stupid and pointless. Arguing over like when you put into perspective where we are in the universe, you know, this tiny, tiny little dot where single species were technically quite a special thing in the universe you know and how do we represent ourselves not particularly well i totally get why our laws in the uk are the way they are with firearms because we have well we were able to get rid of so many that we actually could control them um you know without going into politics and stuff i think that's america's problem is in as much as people might want to get rid of them there's an awful lot left. Uh, and, you know, if you say, oh, well, it's illegal to keep that gun, well, I don't think the criminals really care about that. And I will say, um, during the time of COVID, you know, when things started to get a bit rioty and you started to think, well, what if there was widespread riots? How, how can I, as an English person, defend myself? And I have me. Now, thankfully for me, you know, I happen to have, grown into a six foot four guy, I'm pretty big, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't tend to be scared of people, uh, but, you know, if, if it came to a riot, I mean, how do you protect yourself during that, you, you just can't, now this is not me saying that we should all have guns, because I actually don't think that's a good idea, because then they're more accessible to the people you don't want them, that's why I say I think we kind of, although they say they're getting them in the UK is very easy these days, but you don't really hear about too much going on. Most of it's normally because of, um, you know, the UK police always sees this, sees that, and you're like, you've seized an air rifle the person legally owned. You've seized an airsoft gun. That is a water squirter. <laughs> Obviously, they do do good work. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not anti-police or anything like that. So WD into it and just move it back and forwards a bit and hope this cleans it out. I don't want to get all of it out, obviously, because it could rust. But the humidity inside's too low for that, to be fair. Oh, look, it's squirting out the side like little wormies. Honestly, this is the most disgusting thing I think I've ever bought from one of these sort of military surplus places that sells these sorts of things. I think um, this Bren mag was £4. Like, just so sillyly cheap. I mean, this is, this is a, you know, you, I don't know, was this a video that went, was this a Patreon exclusive or one that went to YouTube? I can't remember now, um, but I am sort of 
over the past few years becoming more minimalist in the sort of, I'm not a minimalist, but, you know, getting rid of everything I don't need. But someone put it this way. I can't remember. They quoted someone and they said, don't own anything you don't find useful or beautiful. Now, I'm not going to say that I find a magazine beautiful, but, you know, but the sort of, um, the connection to real history, such a small object, is actually quite an interesting thing. If you get my meaning. God, every surface and every hole is just full of grease still. Sadly, of course, some of our best and fastest uh, forward-thinking engineering has come from working out ingenious ways to kill each other. It's just... it's a bit sad, really, isn't it? Before anyone says anything on the long lines of, well, if you like these sorts of things, you'd love Forgotten Weapons or In Range or or uh, any of the channels, <laughs> you know, the sort of the gun channels, i probably subscribed to them already. I'm not really that interested in, uh, you know, a lot of the modern stuff necessarily. I'm not opposed to it. It's interesting to know about it, but it's the history stuff that I'm most interested in and the early days of them coming up with solutions to problems rather than just using old solutions because like motorbikes, really, down to it, over the years, they haven't changed that much. <laughs> There's been no drastic change, and that can be said. The same can be said for firearms. That's now nice and clean. I haven't got all of the oil or grease out because you know it's going to be inside. It doesn't matter. The follower goes in, and it's got that on the back, so you can't put it in the wrong way round. I assume no. At least that slides now. Ah, come on. Where's my? I'll oh, use a screwdriver handle. Maybe that. You back down there, yep, the catch is caught. Now I need something cleaner. I guess a drop of oil can't harm. This is just basic three in one oil. Okay, well that's cleaned up. Let's just check it's functioning. Functioning perfectly fine. In fact, I can keep that one, because it's not covered in that much plastic from the casting process. So there's the marking on it, the only marking, and as you see, it's got no punctuation. So, would I be correct in assuming this is US made 1942? Anyone know? But, yeah, that's uh, cleaned up very nicely. Oh, one other thing I need to just quickly clean off is this, which is a uh, casing from uh, an Apache helicopter, the cannon on off of it. Uh, 30 mil, and it's just got dust and stuff all over it, so just going to clean it with a bit of a wheel. There you go, that cleaned up nicely. The uh, the interesting thing about this is I I have a 30 millimeter case that's basically the same size as this from a Harrier Ooh, <laughs> garage door, uh, and it's made of solid brass and it weighs a ton. Now I know a lot of it's the projectile in the end, but it's still brass. This is aluminium. From what I can tell, super light. And that was the airline falling on the floor. I thought Spooktober was over. <laughs> there we go, well that one's done. I've got uh, one other one I'll show you out my box in a minute when I've got... Let's, let's try and get this apart again. Is this eased up? I'm thinking I have to lift this edge down here. Well, that's a stop. It wasn't exactly as I was planning on doing it, but it worked. Wow, this is a... Um... Right, just recognise what's going on here. That goes to the groove in the back. No, don't catch. I don't want to strain this spring. I'm not pulling on the spring! Okay, I now know why this follower won't come out. The back edge here is being bent inwards and it stops the follower coming up and out. Now I can't quite tell if that's been done in factory because it's very neatly done or whether that's just damage over the years. I imagine it's probably just damage, but as I can clean this without bending that back, I'm gonna do that. What is nice is all the surface rust that was on it was actually stuck to the grease, not the mag itself. 
Where's that toothbrush? That would be very handy, actually. Now I'll just say, you'll probably note something in the comments along the lines of what the hell is this? This is a load of rubbish, why would I want to watch someone do this? You don't actually have to. This is for that weird corner of the internet. People like me enjoy stuff like this. I don't know where this was last used, and I assume it was used at some point, uh, but it is absolutely full of sand. So I don't know if that represents where it was last used, or whether um, it was just kept like near a builder centre or something in the time that it was in the UK. Well, I've cleaned it the best I can, scrubbing it with a toothbrush from one end, then shoving rags into it and bringing it back out. I mean, look, this sort of stuff that came out. Um, oiled it up. I've cleaned it the best I can. I can't do any better than that, really, because I can't get in there. I now know how you do this the easy way, and I know why it's difficult to get on and off. The easiest way is to get these lumps over the edge of the mag there, hook it over one side, then just pinch the mag sides and slide it. And there we go. That was ten times easier. So yeah, hook it on the other side, give it a slight pinch and it falls in the groove. There's still some rust I've just found on the outside, so I'm using the oil and this uh, toothbrush because it shouldn't scratch anything other than get the rust off. Okay, that was a bit of a pain in the butt, but that's cleaned up really nicely in the end. Um, all functioning nicely. The markings on this one is... MA and a star. Looks like L with an arrow up 17. B. MA again. And then there's another mark which is there's a 2 and a star. So I think that means this is mark 2. This is 308. Um, I think there may have been a change in calibre at some point along the way. But I'm pretty sure that that star 2 means mark 2. But yeah, it's all right. One to go. Pick one of these up as well. That one, police, army, whoever. Basically, 37mm rubber bullet. You've heard of them. This is said rubber bullet. Uh, down in there, you can see a little shoulder that that forces in there. It's a very, very tight fit. I'm not going to try and push it in there. But it sits about there, there. Out there. This thing on this end is a bit squidgy, like you can see you can press it in a bit, but it's airtight so it doesn't give that much. The body of it's pretty solid plastic and this is like a Delrin or something on the bottom of here. Um, you can actually see the marks in this one where it's been fired. However, I don't think I'd want to be hit by that. That's if that hit you in the head, yeah, I wouldn't want to go for that. That was just another thing I picked up for literally, I think it was like, I think that was like a pound, and that was like one pound fifty or something. So I mean, you can pick up these bizarre objects um, for next to nothing. Right, G3 mag, uh, gloves back on, because this is a bit grim. I'm not going to go into any sort of a history that I know or anything like that because this is literally just a hobby interest to me. Um, I think I know, you know, that what I know is relatively reliable, but because there's people out there that do it so much better, if you really want to know about like the G3 or the Bren or, or the Thompson, you can go and watch their video and it would make much more sense. It's so sticky and grim. So, I mean, every single one of these is covered in this like really heavy axle grease stuff. trying to decide how to clean this rust off, I was thinking about using phosphoric acid. But I don't know what it's going to do to this, because this doesn't look like stainless. It shouldn't do anything to the steel. I can't tell if it's doing anything or not. It doesn't appear to be bubbling in any way. I just realised it was really cold in here, so I warmed up this little steel plate, and I've put it underneath 
the uh, acid and it's now bubbling nicely. I think you'll find that you can, if you're interested in collecting these things, if you get the stuff that's a bit cheaper because it's a bit rusted or a bit dirty, um, you can save quite a bit of money. I mean, yeah, this has taken me an hour of cleaning. I didn't want to do this, but I've resorted to using some very fine wire wool. Let's take this rust off. Thankfully the paint or the, the finish or whatever it is, is, is surviving this. The acid may have dulled this a little bit. I can't quite tell, but I'm not that fussed. Um, I'm getting some rounds to put in this anyway, so it will actually not be visible. Went in that side and then clipped over like that. Easy. That seems right. Yeah, there's a little tab that sticks out there and there's a little flanged part, so it looks like that was supposed to go like that. Well, there we go, degreased, de-rusted, cleaned, re-oiled, put back together, all functioning as should be, but that is a very floppy follower. But I guess when they're from the rear, it, yeah, interesting. So that's quite an improvement on what they look like when I was sent them, I have to say. Especially that Thompson mag. As I say, remember this is all legal, all inert, legally purchased from online. You can do the same if you wish. No, I'm not going to give you their company names because I don't want you buying all the stuff that I want. It will just drive the prices up. You can find it if you want it. Also, if any of the companies want to work me and send me some bits and pieces and I'll make little videos on them. I'm for that. <laughs> anyway, hopefully you found that interesting. If you didn't, I don't know why you watched, but if you did, leave a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, and also note, this isn't my main channel. My main channel is Spice110, the full channel. Go and, go and check it out. Bye-bye.